Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to Virtual Church. Once again, we are here. It's good to be back. I've had a few weeks off um, doing these live requested virtual churches, so it's very, very nice to be sat here again. In fact, it's so nice, in fact, that I've got um, the crowd just really like that, and they're really pleased to have me back. That's, uh, okay, calm down, calm down. So what have we got tonight? We've got a bunch of hymns which you might not be surprised about. All requested by you. Come thou fount of every blessing, sing we of the blessed mother. O thou who camest from above, um, the God of Abraham praise and many, many more. We've also got uh, a top five, a top five um, request um, of hymns there by one of you. That's coming up later. And I'm going to just crack on now straight away into our first hymn, which is Guide Me, O Thou Great Redeemer, Pilgrim Through This Barren Land. This has been requested by Harry. I'll see you in a moment. So nice to be playing this organ actually I know this organ very well uh, we are using the uh, Salisbury Cathedral sample set as the thumbnail suggests it's the first time that I've used this organ live on any video on beauty and sound of course all of you would have seen um, Marco Sever's phenomenal recital I'm sure you did if not where were you um, this is the first time we're using it live so I spent quite a lot of time today tweaking it it's all very well recording it and then playing around with it in post-production doing it live I can't do any of that so I hope that this is coming across really well I really would like your feedback in the chat what do you think to this organ how does it sound uh, because of course we have heard the real organ uh, in Salisbury on this channel for, uh, in a virtual church how does this one compare to the real one? 
So, we are obviously now out of organ festival period, um, but one of the main the crucial questions I have for you guys is, did you enjoy the festival? Did you enjoy the content? And more specifically, what did you like the most? And what would you like to see more of in future organ festivals? So please do let me know again in the chat. So the next hymn is um, a request which is coming from, from Derek Warren. So thank you very much, Derek. Uh, this, this is, uh, come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some um, melodious sonnet, ooh, that's nice, uh, sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount, I'm fixed upon it. The mount of thy redeeming love. The tune is called Nettleton, and as I've said, this is a request from Derek Warren. So I would really appreciate just very briefly your chat um, your feedback about the organ festival. Let's have a listen to these beautiful um, mutations which are down on the choir division. And let's accompany that with just some very quiet stops up here. And let's see how we get on with that. Beautiful uh, hymn, Derek. Thank you very much for sending that one through. So as I said right at the very top of the program, um, it's so good to be back. And I've, I hope you don't mind, but last week I had a week off. Don't have many weeks off here on BC. Um, and last week we were actually away um, down in the most beautiful part of, um, towards southern, uh, southern France. We had a really fantastic time. Just nice to get some headspace, get away from um, from England, from the UK, and just 
see new surroundings, meet new people, see new um, cultures and experience new food. So, oh, so nice to get away. And I just feel, we all feel, feel tired because it's obviously a holiday. Do you find this? Do you find a holiday actually is quite tiring? When you get home, you feel like you need to have another holiday to get over the holiday. Um, and of course, all the driving as well. But it was just sublime. So I hope you don't mind. I had a week off. But I'm back now, back to business. And I, I should say that we'd probably not have a week off now until, well, gosh, until Christmas at the very least. So let's uh, have a look at our next hymn, shall we? So this is a well-known one. You'll all know this. You'll all know the, um, the music and you'll all know the words. It is, sing we of the Blessed Mother um, who received the angel's word and obedience to his summons bore in love the infant Lord. These might not actually be overly familiar, uh, um, a familiar translation of these words. Um, but regardless, the tune is Abbot's Lay um, by Cyril Taylor. And more importantly, it has been requested by David Turner, DCT Online. David is one of our, along with Benjamin, and a few others actually now, which is very nice to see, uh, one of our um, track listers, which um, is massively, massively appreciated. So as I said, we also have a top five um, hymns coming up as requested by yourselves, and we've got some good um, sentences as to why each hymn is this person's uh, favorite hymn. If you want to send in your top five hymns, you absolutely can. Send them on uh, to virtualchurch at beautyandsound.co.uk. Meanwhile, sing we of the Blessed Mother.
its organ is rather good. I should say, I, it, the, the real organ is rather good. The real organ is one of my favourite organs in this country. So this Halper version had better be good because it's got high, it's got a high, um, you know, it's got high standards. It's got a lot to live up to, hasn't it? I think it does a good job. This was one of the oldest uh, Hauptberg organs on the market. It's really, really old. Um, this came out in about, I, I don't know, someone will know. It's about 2010 uh, sort of time. So it's 12 years old. Technology has moved on a long way. Hauptberg has come on a long way since then and it, it still sounds pretty good I've had to tweak quite a lot of things to make it sound a bit more lifelike and a bit more raw and because I know the real organ I've just moved some things around actually so if you're listening with headphones I wonder whether you probably can't hear it quite so much today but on the Marco Sever recording I actually distributed the divisions to the left and right channels uh, to coincide with how the real organ is laid out in the cathedral in, in, in its two chambers. On the Hamburg version, it doesn't do that for some strange reason. Um, so I've actually just distributed the divisions a fraction to the left and to the right. And I've also just pulled some volumes up and down as well, because of course the real organ has just gone through a major uh, restoration, where nothing much was changed, but it was cleaned and just given a, given a little bit of new, a new lease of life, some new lungs perhaps and it sounds better than ever. So the tuba now is bigger than it was. They've actually brought the pipes forward in the, uh, in the north case, but that's, that's on the left as you're looking at the organ. So the pipes actually are further forward in the case, therefore they're actually more prominent. So the tuba um, in your headphones should be fractionally over on the left-hand side. Um, and then similarly, a choir is over on the, on the other side and etc. So again, please do, I'm really, really interested to know what you think about the sound tonight. Because this is a, the, a BIS uh, debut, debut. So please, please do let me know, don't hold back. We're all about uh, looking for improvements here. So we're gonna have one more piece, one more, sorry, one more hymn, and then we're going to zoom into an organ piece. Um, what's the next hymn? Well, it's one of my absolute favorites. I played this when I was in Gloucester, they're doing my virtual church from Gloucester Cathedral. And what a treat that was. It turns out that my, by the way, this is, this is quite cool. This was not intentional, but a lot of you, I think people outside of the UK and people who aren't necessarily organists won't know that the organ of Gloucester Cathedral isn't actually in the cathedral anymore. It doesn't exist in the cathedral. It has been taken out. Which is very sad, because it's a, I, 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 I thought it was a wonderful organ with a lot of character. It's been taken out and it's going to go through a big sort of renovation. Um, don't quite know in what, to what extent yet. Uh, but it turned out that the BIS recording that I did for the virtual church and Jonathan's recital and organ demonstration uh, was the very final recording, official recording, if you like, of the organ before it went out. So it, it, it will stand as a um, sort of a pole in the sand, a landmark, um, sort of a, a final uh, farewell to the organ that I created for, for future generations. Because there's a lot of talk about the, the previous organ at Gloucester. It was a Harrison and Harrison under Herbert Sumption's time which was supposed to be fabulous, fabulous um, Harrison organ, which was taken out and changed. Um, and people w really want to be able to hear that organ again. There are some LP recordings, of course, but that don't, it doesn't quite do the organ just, um, justice. So that's a proud moment for us, I think. So the, so the next hymn that I played in Gloucester, which is why I took a, took a bit of a deviation there, um, is, O Thou Who Camest From Above, The Pure Celestial Fire To Impart. And the tune is called Hereford, and the, the requester is Julian Goldring.
A really fabulous hymn, isn't it? A really gorgeous hymn. I'm glad you're enjoying the organ, as Sam has just said. Um, those gorgeous um, mixtures, they're really gorgeous, aren't they? There's nothing, um, you know, when I was talking to John Challenger about when I went over to record the organ, I'm talking to him about what, you know, what he might change about it. And he said he wouldn't change a single thing about it. And that's quite an accolade, isn't it, to an organ? You know, um, an organ, an organ's organist knows it inside out, and the person who plays it every day will often say, "Oh, do you know, I just I really wish it could do this, and I really wish that stop was just a bit louder or something." But to, ha to have the Salisbury Cathedral organist saying, "No, wouldn't change a single thing about it. It's perfect." That's quite high praise. And talking about John Challenger, he's actually going to come round to BIS um, in the next few weeks hopefully in August, to, to voice this organ for me and for us. Um, he's going to come in here and play it and actually um, make it sound as lifelike as possible. So that's pretty cool, isn't it? All right, let's have, a, let's have a little organ piece. This hasn't been requested. If you have any requests, by the way, any spontaneous requests, as Paul Larson has just done, uh, Riley and Paul, uh, please do uh, leave a super chat and we'll try to get through them today. So assembly with organ pieces as well. I can't promise with organ pieces that I'll play them today because I might need to go and practice them. Heaven forbid. But this one is a piece of Bach, which um, I um, just think is fab, frankly. It's as simple as that. So we're going to have it. Let's see how we get on. Should we go for the multi-camera shot?
Well, that was, if you didn't know, the um, wonderful Prelude and Fugue in C um, BWV545, I think it's 545 or 545. Um, played on the organ of Salisbury Cathedral. Are you staying down or are you going back up now? I just photo bombed you. Is that why you ran off? Is that why you ran off at great speed? No. no. <laughs> yeah, well, if you want to get a microphone, you can get a microphone and chill out in here. Even though there's not much chilling because it's red hot in here. Well, you've got the aircon on. Even with the aircon on, it's red hot. Are you not? Is it, is it, is it cooler in here than it is the other? Yes. I don't believe that. This room is really hot. Jameson Wheeler's in. He's got his book, his call for composers. Good. I'm really glad. If you have received your book, we should have created an emoji. It shouldn't be a special emoji. Oh, yes. If you have received your BIS book, Hi, uh, let us know. Please let us know in the chat. Uh, have you received your book yet? Um, Hi, Jim. <laughs> Say hello to everyone. Say hello to me. Ah, hello, everyone. Yes. Uh, yes. If you have received your book, please uh, let us know. Right, let's go on. Let's Maurice, go on. Sam, hello. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello, hello yes. You've got, you can get your own microphone. It's, I left it out for you. It's there. It's on the VIP seat. Um, right, so where are we going next then? Let's go, let's go to this one. We had a request from Daniel. Um, Daniel Kubaki, who sent this through three times uh, whilst we were away. So that, that's very, Alex. very keen. Alex, Bill, um, Garrett, James. Mary? Oh. What, they've received their books? Excellent. Oh, Tim, thank you very much. What would you like? We'll make a note of your uh, request. Thank you very much, Tim, for your five pound. It's very kind. David's put a good, um, a good emoji there, yes. Daniel Kibaki sent through this uh, hymn called, uh, Why Should I Feel Discouraged? Why Should the Shadows Come? Why Should My Heart Be Lonely and Long for Heaven and Home? When Jesus is my portion, uh, my constant friend is he, his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Uh, the tune it's called, His Eye is on the Sparrow. So if you know this, please do let us know in the chat. It's new to me. I wonder whether it's new to Caroline as well. You've so, played it before on VC. Well, I, I didn't have a cop, have I? Yeah, but before, probably before we had Hugo, before the electronic uh, hymnal. In uh, those days, yes. I, 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 remember I remember those it. days. Yeah. Those quiet days. Quiet days. We could do what we wanted. There we go, there's a flute. Let's have a go then. So, um, why should I feel discouraged?
nice little tune. Thank you very much, Daniel, for sending that through. Right, let's go on then. So, and oh, thank you, Jim. Your August, your August birthday donation. That's very kind. Twenty dollars. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Um, so, James Mossop is up uh, next. Is I missing a refrain or something? Um, no, the refrain is "Is eyes in the sparrow and he watches me." Is eyes in the sparrow and he watches me. Oh yeah. Barbara just said, "Where's the refrain?" Well, there, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I don't know. Let's, well, well, there might be a refrain. Let's see. Let's see what people say. Um, the God of Abraham Praise of the tune uh, Leone, by, uh, requested by James. Let me fire that one up. This is that big, big tune in uh, F minor. So many hymns on here now. That I takes sing me because on. I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. Hang on. Is the hymnal in the back of the organ? Which one? I don't know, I'm just looking in the ELW. God. I don't think it's in there, is it? It might be. Um, there we go. So whilst... No. It's not in there. I, I, I had to hunt online for it. Did you? Mm. Oh dear. Have a look in um, the 1982. I don't think it might be in there. Might not. Carols for choirs. <laughs> no, it's definitely not in the hundred carols for choirs. Don't get don't get every all the hymn books out. That's because 1982 is at the bottom. Oh, Alright. Come on, chop chop. Keep it waiting. You have to go all the way back to the index, unfortunately. It's not, not an alphabetical order. It's the first Speak line of the Sparrow. Oh no, what is the first line? I don't know, I've closed it. go back? It. Why should I feel discouraged? Oh, that might, might have been in the... In the oh, right, I'm going to play the next hymn then. So, uh, for James, who's waiting very patiently. Um, so James says, this is our opening hymn this morning. I played... Oh, you played the Noel Rawsthorn last verse. Okay, well, we'll better have a look at that then, hadn't we? Let's have a look at that. Noel's telling me I'm not even going to bother looking it up. Because it's not in uh, there. We, it's not even, what, in the 1982? Well, I don't think, we've, have we got any hymn books where it is? I don't know, I, I found mine online. Anyway, so the God of Abraham prays who reigns on the throne above. Sorry about the hiatus there. This is, a, this is the tune, uh, Leone, uh, for James Mossop, and we're going to have a very um, outrageous last verse, three harmonizations, four verses.
Well, even though I said you'd have some Noah Rawson extravaganza in the final verse, you did. But it was only the, literally the last line. And I've realized as I was just about to start playing from the book, <laughs> I, had, I had a hymn in the same key, but not quite the right tune. This is what I had open. similar isn't it? I think the congregation would have uh, actually thrown eggs at me if I'd, if I'd played uh, that hymn whilst they were singing this hymn so <laughs> I managed to find it just in time for the final line let's just have a listen to the actual the final all of the last verse here we go what Noel Rawsthorne wrote. What a fab hymn that is. Really fabulous hymn. Thank you very much, James, for bringing that to all of our attention tonight. Just gonna to tone it down now um, for organist Dan. That's a great name, uh, Dan. Organist Dan, who says this. My nephew passed away a couple of months ago and he really loved this hymn. So we're just going to tone the volume down and bear Dan um, and his family in all of our thoughts. I don't know whether you're watching Dan, um, but if you are, just let us know where you are in the world so we can just all v virtually be with you, you know. So where are you in the world? He's requested a very short hymn. It's a hymn that um, is, is associated with schools, with school assemblies, um, essentially with young people. And it is uh, one more step along the world I go, one more step along the world I go. From the old things to the new, keep me traveling along with you. And it's from the old I travel to the new, keep me traveling along with you, uh, to the tune South Coat.
a very nice, a very nice uh, simple hymn, which I'm sure we all uh, know from our school days. I certainly know it from our school days. Um, but that was for uh, Dan, uh, specifically organist Dan, who uh, requested that to his nephew, who, who um, very sadly passed away a couple of months ago. So Dan, our, all of our thoughts um, are with you and I um, hope that was um, okay for you. So I think we've actually found this refrain to this, this here hymn. Um, so I'll actually just, I'll just play it. I'll, play, I'll give you one verse. Um, the, um, why should I feel discouraged? I'll give you one verse of the whole thing. I have to make sure that I remember to update my iPad, otherwise I'll just play it again, blazingly play it again. And of course, miss the refrain off again. So you have to remind me, if, I ever, if it ever gets requested again, you have to say, have you got to the refrain, Richard? <laughs> right, here we go. So um, why should I feel discouraged? One verse with the refrain. You, you time stampers, I'm not sure how, quite sure how you're going to do this in your time stamps, but I'll leave that to you. There we go. So that was actually a slightly different harmonisation. I think I preferred the other one. And obviously, you know that I prefer the key of D flat rather than C major as well. Um, so we'll make sure that we update the iPad uh, with the correct version in the future. Now for the next hymn, we've actually had this hymn requested uh, more than once but we've actually had two tunes requested for the same word. So we'll have the, what I will do is I will play a few verses of each. Um, it's ye who own the faith of Jesus. Um, let me find it. There it is. So the first tune um, that I know, that, I'm, that I associate this, these words to is daily, daily. Um, and the second tune we're going to have is, um, uh, it's a bit fuzzy actually, there is Den des Vatus Sin Giborn, um, which I don't know, but it's two of the same words. So actually we'll have uh, two verses of each, if that's okay, um, otherwise we'll be here all night. In fact, no, we'll have, we will have three verses of each, because there were seven verses in the hymn book with, um, with two star verses. So we'll omit, we'll omit one verse, um, but we'll have actually three verses of these two tunes. So as I say, the first tune will be called Daily Daily, and the second tune is called Den des Vaters Sin Giborn, it's German. Um, and Daily Daily was requested by uh, David Turner, um, because it's Mary Sunday. 
and then the second tune was requested by Tristan uh, again for the feast of St Mary so let's let's have a go at this let's get the tuba prepared of course what a fab tuba this is definitely the best tuba in the fleet 100% I'm not sure actually. The tuba on Doodle Launch is fairly epic. And somebody mentioned it actually in, in the uh, chat earlier. I did a, a, a YouTube short and an Instagram reel where I had the, um, this read. Uh, on Doodle Launch, competing with the Shamard. So it was like a Shamard versus tuba. Um, so you. you if you want to go and watch that, you can. The Doodle Orange tuba is epic, but this tuba is a real English tuba. Having said that, the Doodle Orange or the tuba is an English tuba as well, so I don't know. <laughs> Enough waffle. That's not what you're here for, is it? You're here for hymns and organ music and some entertainment. Waffletainment, anyway. Come on, let's go.
So, the same words, two different tunes. Ye who own the faith of Jesus, sing the wonders that were done. First tune was Daily Daily, the second tune was Den Des Vartus Sin Geboren, which was new to me. Um, requested there by David Turner and Tristan, respectively. So thank you very much, guys, for requesting those. A couple more hymns now until we go into our um, top five hymns tonight, as requested by you. You can send me your favourite, um, your top five favourite hymns on email. Um, with a couple of uh, sentences uh, explaining why they are your favourite hymns. Be sure to list the order in which you want, you know, what, what is your favourite hymn and what is your fifth favourite hymn, otherwise I have to guess. I'm surprised some of you haven't, didn't do that. So make sure you put one, two, three, four, five. The next hymn, uh, requested by uh, Benjamin Yao, uh, was sent to me via a high quality scan, so thank you uh, very much uh, Ben for sending that through. It's not what these hands have done uh, can save this guilty soul. Not what this toiling flesh has borne can make my spirit whole. And then the refrain, which I do have here. Yay. Thy work alone, my saviour, can ease this weight of sin. Thy blood alone, our Lamb of God, can give me peace within. Um, let's have a look then at this one. This is not one that I have ever seen before. So let's have a... I don't know why that, this, this, the orbois comes out so early on this organ. I don't know why I've done that. Why have I done that? It shouldn't come out so early. One, two. I'm going to change it now, actually. So change it to three. And four can be the octave. Five can bring out the oboe. Six. Can bring out that a six a five six seven no let's bring out that one six let's bring that one five there we go let's see what this hymn hit this hymn sounds like uh let's go
How many people was that new to? Definitely new to me. So we have our final hymn now, um, which um, marks the end of our pre-requested pre hymns. And then after this final hymn, we're going to go into our top five. And I should say these top five hymns are really, really good. So our final uh, pre-request comes in from Ben Wallace. Ben Wallace um, is a, uh, a dear friend of, of Beauty and Sound. Uh, having requested lots of hymns over the past couple of years and always sends in high quality scans. Um, so thank you very much Ben for all of your support over the years and all of, all of your good company and good humour and, uh, and your singing for the virtual choir that we did back in 2020. This is another gentle hymn. It's fairest Lord Jesus, ruler of all nature, son of God and Son of Man. I'm just wondering what um, stops we haven't actually yet had as a solo stop. So in the previous hymn you heard the cor anglais on the solo, the oboe on the solo and the clarinet on the solo. How about we have a little bit of fun with the, some of the swell stops as a solo stop. So we can use the, the quietest stop on the choir Those. That's it, and we can get some a couple of solo stops set up on the solo and the swell. So let's see what happens.
So that was a request there from Ben Wallace. Um, Fairest Lord Jesus. A beautiful hymn there. Thank you very much, uh, Ben, for sending it through. So now we're just going to go into our uh, top five uh, requested hymns. Uh, well, someone's top five hymns. Before we do that, we're going to have a very cheeky little fanfare um, that's sponsored by Lewis. Uh, Lewis Harvey has given me £40 for a cheeky fanfare. Well, let's see if we can do a cheeky fanfare. Let's get the tuba and let's just have, it's two pages long. This is a great piece, very short. I hope I can play it. Um, this is really fab, this. It's the Archbishop's Fanfare by Francis Jackson. I told you it's very very short um, and actually if you play it at the right tempo it's six seconds exactly <laughs> um, York has a very famous tuba moralibus which um, this piece was written for it sounds extraordinary on the organ anyway so after that that takes us into um, our top five now and Lewis that was rather fortunate that you suggested that because the top five hymns today are requested by Lewis Harvey, who just requested that fanfare. So you could say that was a little segue into, um, into uh, Lewis's top five. So let's have a look at where we're starting at number five. So Lewis has given me a sentence or two um, for each hymn as to why these hymns are his favorites. So let's make sure we have them. Um, so I don't even have the first hymn. That's a good start, isn't it? Have we got any decent hymn books here? Let's find the first hymn. The first hymn is Angel Voices Ever, um, Ever Singing, uh, number 589 in here. And, and Lewis says this. It's a beautiful hymn to which, um, to which I adore due to the nature of the tune, music and words. It's also a hymn which was another one of my late um, great, sorry, my, my late grandfather's favourites and one that I'd like to dedicate to him. So it's angel voices ever singing round thy throne of light.
having gotten to know the real organ at Salisbury Cathedral, I know that you wouldn't ever really need to use that much on the organ. Um, Jerry, um, oh, Jerry, are you in? Yes, yes, we do. Um, Jerry Hall went over to Salisbury just uh, 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 last week. Yes, Jerry's here. Jerry's in, so Jerry would know what the organ sounds like in real life. And Jerry, does this organ sound familiar to you? You know how loud it is in the real um, building. It's very, very loud. Anyway, that was number five on Lewis's list. And number four on Lewis's list is, is another absolute corker of a hymn. And this one, it requires lots of reeds. It even says in the copy reads all available trumpets it says um, and so what can it possibly be it is of course all people that on earth do dwell <coughs> excuse me oh yeah look jerry's confirmed it's very loud <laughs> it is all people that on earth do dwell to the wonderful arrangement here by um by Rafe Vaughan Williams. So let's pull out all of these tubers. You might want to turn your hi-fis down, your speakers down, your headphones down, or knowing you, you will probably turn them up. But anyway, you've been warned. It's even louder now, isn't it, the organ? Because they took those rags out of some of the pipes when they cleaned it. Socks and stuff. Yeah, yeah they found rags in some of the pipes. To make them quieter, yeah, it's true. It is true. Here we go. I hope you've got your fingers in your ears because here come the reeds.
So number four in Lewis's list, All People That On Earth Do Dwell. And I should say that this was a hymn which Lewis has loved ever since he was introduced to it here on BIS, LTD. And now have fallen in love with the music, words and tune. It's also a hymn which was one of uh, Lewis's late grandfather's favourites. So that was at number three. We're actually going to go now, we're going to do full circle and go back to the very first hymn that we had tonight. It is, Guide Me, O Thou Great Redeemer. And actually, as we, as we have already had this uh, hymn, no, we will have all of the verses, it's quite short. This is Lewis's number three, a glorious hymn that provides a punch, so it does, and gets everyone singing, especially during the descant section towards the end of every verse. Uh, me and my colleague, when it's, uh, when it's a staff inset, sit at the console and sit along, sorry, and sing along with the descants, whereas everyone else just sings the tune as it is. It provides a good sense of humour to us. Do you know where the um, James Lancelot descant is? James, sorry, James O'Donnell desk camp. I could probably find it, yeah, it's upstairs. But you've got two verses to find it. I've not seen that for a while, I think it might be in the shelf. <laughs> James O'Donnell has arranged this. Um, for, he arranged it for the, the most recent royal wedding, so for um, Catherine and um, Prince William. That's very good, let's see if you can find it. So this is number three. I know we opened tonight's VC with this, but this is, um, as, um, as Lewis says, it certainly packs a punch and gets everyone singing, so I expect you all to be singing at home. Good. I do like the um, the um, the seventh um, in that. Uh, just before you go down to the um, songs of praises, songs of praises. That's a wonderful moment, isn't it? Great. 
great. There it is. Happy to see that I've actually still got a little bit more hair than he has. <laughs> Don't adjust. He's older than me, though. So anyway, that was number three. Number two on Lewis's uh, list is in uh, this hymn book. Um, and this is what this is what Lewis says about it. A hymn that is sung by our students at the school where I work and provides a bright tune with a jolly uh, provides a bright tune with a jolly tune. <laughs> Fair enough. It's a short little ditty. It is quite short. And it's quite lively as well. It's by it's by Graham Kendrick. It's Lord, the light of your love is shining. And it goes like this. So that was number two in Lewis's list. Now number one is one of uh, a lot of our favorites, I know, because it gets requested a lot. Uh, whenever we move into Passion Tide and indeed into Lent even, um, this always, always comes up. And rightly so. It's um, my song is love unknown, my savior's love to me. 
a hymn that was sung at my mum and dad's wedding back in 1995 and has a beautiful tune and has wonderful words that fits the setting to the hymn. It's a hymn that uh, I'd like to dedicate to my mum who sadly passed away due to cancer in October 2021, uh, a similar time to my granddad. So, uh, Lewis, all of our thoughts um, are with you. Um, to remember your mother um, who died last year and of course also to your granddad as well. Very tough time for you. So the tune here is by John Ireland. It is called Love Unknown. Um, we won't have all of the verses, but we will have maybe four of these verses. Um, we will have the verse which um, allows the crowd to cry out, then crucify is all their breath. Because that is, part, that is very much part of the Passion Tide story, isn't it? So my song is Love Unknown. This is Lewis's number one in his own top five hymns. That marks the end of Lewis's uh, top five hymns. So we had angel voices ever singing 
all people that on earth do dwell, guide me, O thou great Redeemer. Shine, Jesus, shine. And number one there was, my song is love unknown. If you'd like to send me your top five favorite hymns, just as Lewis has done, send them through on email um, with a couple of uh, sentences explaining why you've chosen each hymn. I can only do one a week at the minute, um, but I will choose um, the, 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 the top five with the most insightful um, um, context as to why you've chosen those hymns. So make sure you, you write well, you write good English and make it very interesting. I was just saying, I hope you can hear me, I was just saying um, only on BIS could we go from Shine Jesus Shine straight into My Song is Love Unknown and nobody bats an eyelid in the congregation. I bat an eyelid. <laughs> but uh, no, no, yeah, if that happened in a, a real church service it, people might be a bit confused. Different sorts of hymns aren't they really? Yes. Now before we go into our voluntary tonight which actually makes most of um, the tuba, it's a, it's a really great um, tuba tune. We have just a couple of um, requests to get through um, which people have been requesting live. So we have um, um, the tune called Salisbury by Herbert Howells requested by Paul and Riley, Riley and Paul. Um, Tim Carrington has requested um, Lord Jesus Christ, yeah, Living Lord. And actually that's it. So if you, if you have any um, live spontaneous requests, um, please do leave a super chat, just like the other guys have done. That would be really appreciated. Um, can you see, I don't know if you, you can't see it on the screen. No, you can't. So let's go to Paul. So have you got the NEH there? I can guess it. Um, and what, whilst you're finding that, I'll just quickly mention about the Winchester organ oh, yeah, organathon. They'd like to hear about that, I think. 24 hour organathon. We, we, we all here on BIS, we know all about organ marathons, don't we? So, Winchester are um, um, raising money to have their organ refurbished. Uh, it's coming out very much like Salisbury Cathedral came out just recently and going back in without having had much work. No, that's wrong. Without having much changed to it, of course. Uh, but it's, all, it's going to have an entire clean, um, new bellows, new sort of leather work, and a new Vox Humana, which is very exciting. Um, it's costing just over a million quid, and they've raised um, just under a million pounds, so they're very, very close. And just to tip them over the line, they're going to do a 24 hour organ marathon. And um, I'm going to be part of it. I don't think I'll, I won't be broadcasting it, but it might be online. They they do stream most of their services, most of their things, so it might well be online actually. Um, so that's a just an organ marathon coming up. Holy Spirit ever dwelling in the holiest realms of light. Holy Spirit ever brooding over a world of gloom and night. This is a tune called Salisbury. And it's written by Herbert Howells, who was the assistant organist at Salisbury Cathedral in his younger years before he became rather unwell and was unable to, well, basically do his job. So he had to go to hospital and resign from his job at Salisbury, which is a great shame because he was really happy there. Three verses of this um, wonderful, of these wonderful harmonies. Here we go, Paul, are you still with us? Hope you enjoy this.
it's such a really, really great tune. Um, I'm just really quite sad that it's not sung more frequently. I think it really should be. Have you ever sung that tune? Let me know in the chat if you have ever sung it. I think we've, I've only ever played it once in real life, and that was at Chester. Other than that, I haven't. Um, oh, thanks, Katrina. She watched your even song stream from Winchester on Thursday, I think. Thank you. Thank you, Katrina. Thank you very much. That's very kind. Yes, I, I was playing at Winchester just the other day. Right, so, very kind. Uh, Tim Carrington has requested, um, Lord Jesus Christ, you have come to us. You are one with us, Mary's son. He says, welcome home, Richard. Well, thank you very much. For those of you who don't know, family and I have had a week in France, which is very, very nice. Very hot, very, very hot. Hotter than it is here. Um, is, but um, his request for this balmy English evening, <laughs> which means it's hot. It is hot, but how are you guys keeping cool? I've got the aircon. I don't know. Can you hear the aircon wearing away? It's on its quietest setting. I hope, you, I hope it's not distracting you. So that's how we're keeping cool. We've got all the doors shut, the aircon on, and just about keeping cool. The Living Lord for Tim Carrington.
really beautiful tune and I think as Tim has just said in the chat it uh, works really well during the communion because it is quiet and the, the harmonies are actually rather luscious particularly uh, here well I think those are the standard harmonies by Patrick Appleford so let's now go into a request which is just coming from uh, Lucy and Lucy by the looks of her avatar looks very cozy in her onesie <laughs> can't imagine for one moment Lucy that you are wearing that right now because you'd actually be <laughs> boiling uh, unless you've got a very efficient air conditioner going so cheese you lover of my soul uh, let me to thy bosom fly we just had a couple of donations come in let's, let me just zoom back up to Lucy um, to a tune Avariswith yes of course that's one of the great tunes isn't it uh, so thank you very much Tim uh, for your second donation uh, and Ian as well Ian thank you very much for that Ian was at Glenfinnan this morning the home of the famous viaduct the viaduct, viaduct we, we went to where you got a bit of soot in your eye because <laughs> you were looking out the window how can I forget don't if you ever go on a steam train don't put your head out the window <laughs> I know it, it's just like you'll be fine. It, it, all the warnings are there saying don't put your head out the window and you think, yeah, I'll be all right. Just don't do it because if you get soot in your eye, it jolly hurts. For a long time, it does hurt. Gigi Lover of My Soul to the tune Avarice with three verses to these wonderful words uh, by Charles Wesley. And of course, the tune is by um, Joseph Parry. So Lucy, she's not, she's not wearing her onesie, she's yeah. confirmed. I was going to say two things. I'm glad you're not wearing a onesie, because you must be mad if you were. 
Um, and the second thing is, great choice of a hymn there. That's really great, isn't it? And it's a very strong tune, Everisworth. Always been one of my favourites. And a bit of Noah Rawlsthorne and McVeigh in the final verse there for you. So we're actually going to. Have we had any? Some, have we had any more requests? I just saw. There was one from Adam Heron. Oh, Adam. Yes. Okay. Um, so Adam has requested a hymn, and whilst playing, Adam, by the way, is one of our composers. In here, four times he appears in here. <laughs> Greedy. And so he was and so. on the the recent um, recital. He was, and the masterclass. Mm -hmm. So if you want to see Adam Heron playing, um, he plays. Very nicely played. Played the. Oh, um, played the um, the B minor, um, Trailer Big by Bach, and amongst other things. And he's requested a hymn. So before I play this, I'm going to ask you though. Um, so those Can I interrupt you quickly? Just, well, let me ask the question. Okay. Okay. I just said I was <laughs> going to ask you something. <laughs> uh, I'm going to ask you. Um, what has been your favourite hymn tonight? So those people who've been watching uh, from the beginning um, will know all the hymns I've played. Guide me, O thou great Redeemer, uh, come thou fount of every blessing, sing we of the Blessed Mother, O thou who camest from above. Uh, why should I feel discouraged? The God of Abraham prays, one more step along that will I go, etc, etc. What has been your favourite hymn tonight? I really want to know how, what you've enjoyed the most. Caroline, go. Right, a question came in in the chat for you, a bit of waffletainment. Um, Timothy Barnes, has Richard played on an organ with only a few stops and how did you register it? The organ in his town has great eight foot principal, four foot octave, mixture, this, look, this list. How would you register an organ with small specification? I don't in, know where, where we're meant to look there. Just comment here, look. Well, so every organ, is different. Um, every organ it might, might be small, might be large, like this one here at Salisbury. Um, but you have to work with what you've got. So if you've got a flute on, you know, one flute on each manual, um, you can bring those together to create a nice warm, uh, warmer sound. Never try to make an organ do something that it simply cannot do. You kn know the limitations of the organ you're playing. But you can play, uh, so if you have just an eight foot and a four foot flute um, and not much else on the grate, you could then play that up, up the octave. Um, there, are, there are ways around, you know, smaller organs. So I, I play, regularly play up the octave, even with these big organs. Um, sometimes I, so for this hymn coming up in a moment, rather than just doing something like this. So I just have eight foot flutes on the grate and eight and four foot flutes on the swell. Very s straightforward sound. Without changing anything, what I can do is just play the tune up the octave. I'll put it on, my, uh, on a different camera so you can see what I'm doing. Can you see how I'm actually playing the play, playing the, the tune up the octave as well, and filling out the harmony? So rather than playing exactly what's written like this, you actually add notes in. So if you're being quite extravagant, again without changing anything at all, you could really fill it out. Like perhaps in the last verse, without changing the harmony, but just add add extra notes. gives a little bit more weight in the organ accompaniment. So there are ways to make a smaller organ actually sound like a much bigger organ, but it's really important not to try to make an organ do, uh, try to make it do something that it simply cannot do. So then it, that's when it falls down and it sounds, doesn't sound very good. I think um, unofficially, Guide Me O Thou Great Redeemer tonight seems to have been the most popular. Just from a quick scan of the chat. Okay, well it's a good job we've had that one twice then, isn't it? 
<laughs> I was going to I, I was I was going to say oh your favorite hymn will have it again but we can't have that one for the third <laughs> time can we well another request has just come in from, from Tim, Tim Cook. Cook I wonder whether Tim Cook's wearing a onesie I don't know whether they're related I think they probably from are Cook. from his comment he said anything Lucy can do I can do as well <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear. Right, so let's have a go. So Adam Heron has asked for um, this belter here, King's Fold is called. Um, I'm going to put you on multi-camera so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Filling out the harmonies. I won't change the harmony. Shall we have a look and see what he's done? When I say he, I do mean Noel. Because I, I, I love the harmony in this. I just love the standard harmony. I might not change it. So we just discovered that James O'Donnell did a last verse for Blind Vern as well in that book. I know, but you, I'd like to do my own thing in that one. And it's the I? wrong key as well, it's an F. Well, that's all right, just transpose it up. Down. What? Oh, it's an F, isn't it? Oh, an F, so, yeah, up to G. No, I'll, I'll do that another day. I'm not going to play that because I want to just leave it as it is. So I heard the voice of Jesus say for Adam Heron. Multi camera angle coming up. Let's engage the tuba. Okay, what a wonderful hymn that is. Just, you can't change the harmony, can you, on that one? Because it's just, the harmony is so strong and it's so short. The three verses are over so quickly that by the time you get into the third verse, you, you, you think to yourself, wow, this harmony is really, really good. And then the organist changes it. Like, oh, no, I want the harmony back. You feel short change, don't you? So that's why I have to leave that one as it is. So, our second uh, cook tonight, um, what was I saying about two They are cooks? married and he's not wearing a onesie either. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think you missed my little joke there. They didn't, because they've got the microphone. Is, the day thou gavest, Lord, is ended. A perfect way to uh, end tonight's 
uh, VC, the him part at least, before I go into tonight's voluntary. Um, this is the him that we've had a lot of times at uh, our organ Compline, uh, perfect for you know an evening service, and actually will allow us just to maybe end the him section on not quite a loud moment, but the voluntary might be a bit rowdy. You never know. We have to wait, wait and see what it is. So the tune is called St. Clement. Um, it's by Clement Cotterell Schofield. And there are five verses uh, by John Ellerton. Let's, go, let's find a really smooth Rolls Royce silky sound. Let's, let's go with that one, I think, for now. And then we'll work it up a little bit as we go through. So this is for uh, Tim Cook. The day thou gavest, Lord, is ended. Thank you very much, Tim, for your five pound. It's very generous. And of course, thank you for requesting perfect hymn to close um, the hymn section of tonight's virtual church. It's, all, it's very good to have you on board. Um, for anyone else who is uh, new tonight, please do let me know if you are new. Please do say hello. Please do introduce yourselves. It's custom here on um, BIS and VC, Virtual Church, 
uh, to introduce yourselves by saying hello, plus one, so plus one, um, and your location. So for me, it would be plus one Hampshire, plus, plus one or uh, UK. So it's always really, really fab to know where people are in the world. So if you want to do that, as I'm playing this um, organ voluntary, um, uh, I would really appreciate it. So tonight's voluntary is um, going to make use of one particular stop on this organ. It's right underneath the camera here. It is ooh, the tuba. Yes, I can remove stops on this organ as part of its design. It's called Tuba Tune, rather appropriately, and it's by Norman Cocker. And it is, uh, in my, for my money, the best um, tuba tune. It's the best piece which shows off the tuba. There are others, um, but for my money, this is the best. It's also one of the parts of it. Some, some of the hardest. It goes through some very extraordinary keys and some key changes. So let's listen to a little bit of Norman Cocker. Let's listen to his tuba tune, which was written whilst he was the director of music at Manchester Cathedral. They had a really, really fine tuba indeed before they uh, only recently took, the, took that old organ out and replaced it with something completely new, which I haven't yet heard. I'm very interested to go and hear it. So I hope you enjoy this.
making use there of the tuba and the uh, tuba clarion on this organ, an eight foot and a four foot at the end. Full organ uh, there. And I, I take my word for it, if you haven't heard the real organ yourself in Salisbury Cathedral, that would be very loud. The eight and four tubas on that organ are huge. They will, they will very easily um, um, stand their ground against full organ. So I'm actually really pleased that I've um, got this organ and I'm going to keep tinkering with it because I think it's got a lot of potential. And I think it's out of the box. I think it sounds a little bit flat. I think it needs, needs a little bit of, um, you need to inject a little bit of life into it. So I'm gonna keep on injecting more life into it because I'm really enjoying it. It's nice to have an English, or a, an English cathedral organ, finally. Because after all, this is an English console, isn't it? And it's nice to have an English, English organ on which to play it. So that draws the end of tonight's virtual church. You've been a great crowd tonight. Thank you for uh, chatting away. I've, I can see Greg, thank you very much for your donation just now. That's very generous. Um, Lewis, again, you've uh, a member for seven months. Yeah, of course, that's um, seven months already. Gosh. Um, and thank you to everyone else who's donated through the course of the evening. Uh, your money quite simply goes back into BIS and gets reinvested. Got lots of um, big projects coming up over the coming months, and of course, big project as you um, will undoubtedly know about. Hopefully, those of you who bought the BIS um, uh, festival program last week or the week week before will have seen that I'm actually the big project is a new music room to get this organ out of our dining room because this is our dining room, as you can see. It's just a radiator and gin in that corner um, we need to have a proper music room so that's the, the long-term project but shorter term we have uh, more organists coming to play here more master classes already under discussion so that's exciting lots of things happening um, most of which are not free so your support really helps so i hope you've enjoyed your hymn, the hymns tonight i've certainly enjoyed playing them um, and it's nice to be back into the routine so we'll, we'll be back here same time next week for a, for a VC, and you never know, there might be something during the week as well. There might even be something live on Saturday next week. You have to wait and see. Until whatever it is in the future, I will say a cheerio. I will say a good night. I will say a stay cool. I think it's now getting cooler, isn't it? It's going to thunder on Tuesday. Oh, that'll be novel. Can't imagine. I can't imagine rain. What's rain like? I've forgotten what rain feels like. I've forgotten what it feels like to be cold. <laughs> um, I will say cheerio. Okay, good night everyone, take care and stay safe. Caroline's just arrived, has anybody got anything to say to them? I'm just saying, I'm just signing off. No, cheerio. <laughs> there we go. How's Hugo? He's fine. He's all right now, good, all right. Good, I'm gonna go, I might go and pop my, pop my head around the corner. Good night everyone, take care, stay safe, goodbye.